Eminem is one of the greatest rappers of all time. But what if I told you that at the peak of his career, he almost lost everything? So how did this rap god almost destroy his own career? Well, this self-sabotage originally stems from his life before fame. Eminem, or Marshall Mathers III, was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan, which is notorious for being one of the most impoverished cities in the United States. Eminem was abandoned by his father at six months old and was raised by his single mom, Debbie Nelson. Eminem writes a lot about his struggles with his mother, including her addiction to pills. M writes in his song, cleaning out my closet, but put yourself in my position, witnessing your mama popping prescription pills in the kitchen. However, Debbie claims that she never had a codependent relationship with drugs and alcohol. Neglectful. No. Pill popping. No. Welfare collecting. No, you know, you've got to stop this. I mean, your anger and your hostilities towards me. What have I really actually done to you? Regardless, Eminem still holds a lot of resentment towards his mother because this was the seed that planted his downfall. According to Eminem's former security guard, Big Nas, Eminem didn't do many drugs at the beginning of his career. Believe it or not, man, this, a lot of people don't know this, M didn't do a lot of drugs in the beginning. As a matter of fact, Kim used to call me. And hey, ask you make sure that Marshall doesn't do any drugs. However, as Eminem's career began to grow, so did his relationship with drugs. Eminem's drug addiction got really bad in the early 2000s. Yo, this that some of that bomb weed. They go in the front and I'm in the backyard. I'm in the front yard. You don't even know where I am because you front hard. <laughs> he became addicted to Valium, Ambien, and Vicodin to cope with the pressures of fame. I'm good, 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 good. Then my hands are bleeding and my face is bleeding and I'm all scraped up on the pavement. But other than that, it's very cold out here and I'm fantastic. In an interview with Vibe magazine, he claimed that he took 10 to 20 Vicodin a day and that the numbers got so high he didn't even know what he was taking. He was high during the entire Slim Shady LP and the Marshall Mathers LP, which debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 200 and sold 1.78 million copies within the first week. He was even high during the filming of 8 Mile, which won an Oscar for Best Original Song. Eminem was at the the top of his game. So why would he quit using drugs if his career continued to grow? Well, while his addiction kept him going, it would eventually slow him down in the long run. In 2004, Eminem's addiction grew when he recorded Encore and was taking 60 to 90 pills a day. While this album does contain some classics, Eminem agrees that this was one of his worst projects. I have made albums that definitely probably would not be my the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Encore. The following year, he went on the anger management tour where he claimed to be high every single night. In an interview with Rolling Stone, Eminem stated, I was taking so many pills that I wasn't even taking them to get high anymore. I was taking them to feel normal. Between 2004 and 2008, Eminem faced a major writer's block and took a hiatus from music. He started to realize that his success was dependent on the effects of drugs and the less of an effect the drugs had on him, the less he was able to write. In order to overcome this writer's block, Eminem knew he had to get clean. So in 2005, Eminem checked himself into a rehab facility for the first time. However, in April of 2006, Eminem's longtime friend, Proof, was shot and killed at a club on Detroit's Eight Mile Road. This heavy loss led Eminem into a deep depression, overall relapsing. It hit us all, and yeah, everyone in the group. Every, there were so many people that love proof, you know what I mean? Just me particularly took it, it was rough. Yeah. He reverted back to his old ways of pill popping to numb his deep pain. Then in December of 2007, Eminem bought some mysterious pills that turned out to be methadone, which is a strong opioid used to help people lower their use in heroin. The amount of methadone that he took was equivalent to four bags of heroin, leading Eminem to a nearly fatal overdose. You, you almost died. Yeah, definitely. Uh, how close do you think you were to dying? They said two hours. 
If I would have got to the hospital two hours later, that would have been it. Because my organs, everything, my kidneys, everything were failing. And while this moment may have seemed like the death of Slim Shady, this was actually the rebirth of Eminem. After his overdose, Eminem decided to get clean, which turned out to be more difficult than he expected. In the past, Eminem was under the influence for most of his career and didn't know how to be an artist without drugs. So he basically had to relearn how to rap again. He's been sober two and a half years now but has had to teach himself how to write again, rap again, and even how to perform. In 2009, Eminem made the comeback of the century with a feature on Drake's song, Forever, which is now considered a classic in the hip hop genre. Eminem's verse was so good, it made Kanye West rewrite his own verse after hearing it. When I heard Eminem's verse on the Drake shit, I went back and rewrote my shit for two days. I canceled appointments to rewrite. I fucking care. And although this single was iconic, he released his next album, Relapse, later that year, which debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 200 and won two Grammys. While this album was successful on a surface level, fans gave it mixed reviews. Eminem used an odd accent throughout this album, and let's just say that it kind of reminds me of Chet Hanks. Big up, big up the whole island massive. It's your boy Chet and I. Even Eminem admits that he was not proud of this album. I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. I didn't even realize I was doing that many accents. I, only, I just started, for whatever reason, I just got into it and was just like weird serial killer vibe kind of thing. Yeah. And started wanting to talk crazy and started bending words more. And the only way you can bend them, bend them is with this accent, trying to use this one. Like. But then in 2010, Eminem released Recovery, which contained the hit tracks Not Afraid and Love the Way You Lie. Recovery debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 200 and won two Grammys. One for Best Rap Album and one for Best Rap Solo Performance for Not Afraid. Although Recovery was a step up from Relapse, fans thought he sounded a little too loud and angry on this album. It was clear that Eminem was trying to rediscover himself as an artist, but through patience and consistency, Eminem released one of his greatest albums, The Marshall Mathers 2 LP. This album debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 200 and sold 4 million copies within the United States alone. This album featured hit songs such as Berserk, Headlights, Rap Gun, and The Monster. The Marshall Mathers 2 LP won two Grammys including Best Rap Album and Best Rap Song Collab collaboration for The Monster. It was clear that Eminem had rediscovered his artistry. His lyrics were less strange and it was clear he was more mature. Marshall Mathers was no longer Slim Shady, but rather Eminem. Eminem is now 16 years sober and still proves that he is one of the greatest rappers of all time. With the release of his latest album, The Death of Slim Shady, which yet again debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 200, along with his single, Houdini which also debuted as number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Although Eminem may not have that classic sound he used to have early in his career, I personally would not want him to sacrifice his sobriety just to sound better. Eminem's journey to sobriety not only highlights the negative effects of drug dependency, but it also reaffirms that he is still one of the greatest rappers alive. Yeah.